everyone so this video is going to be about how to avoid coming across frauds on poshmark now believe it or not um when i first started i didn't know you know how to spot someone who is just scamming on here and thankfully i was you know i wasn't a victim but i could have been a victim i'm gonna show you something um i think i don't know if i caught it or poshmark caught it but I'm going to show you when I first started um, selling, someone was selling a Telfar bag. I really wanted, I think it was a white Telfar bag and someone, someone was selling it for like, I think $10. Now this was me being ridiculous. I was being naive. If something sounds too good to be true, then um, yeah, it is too good to be true. Um, let me see something. My purchases. Here it is. So, this order was canceled. Um, look at this. Telfar bag. I can I still? Listing not found. They took it down. But as you can see, I mean, can I zoom in? No, I cannot. Is this person's handle still up? Nope. Well, okay. So, yeah. The person looks legit, right? Because they have their picture up. This little uh, banner thing. Please do not be fooled. Do not be fooled. Uh, she's following 140. She has 312 followers, 18 listings. Um, but yet she's a fraud because she, I remember this specific um, page, the person had like maybe say 10 or 12 things posted. And when I looked, they were all like the same price. I'm like, what do, like what's going on? Like, are these Telfars real? So I think I acted quickly, not until I, until I realized like, you know what? why is this so cheap like is this a fake telfar or is, is this just like a scam or something like that right when i went to go cancel it like it this all occurred to me within like 10 minutes when i went to go i think i went to cancel it and i said like this might be fraud did that ha i honestly i don't remember but either way um it was canceled Poshmark saw that as, as well as you can see there's nothing on her page and there are other people like her that's why I'm very, um, I'm very <sighs> apprehensive about buying from people who have no sales. And I, that's not to say that you shouldn't take a chance on the new poshers, but this is just more so in terms of like being aware as to the product and the pricing and seeing how they correlate. Because say, for example, this person has again like a telephone bag for like fifteen dollars that's a bit sketch like no um then you have somebody who's a new posher they have a telephone bag you know the telephone bags retail value that was the really small one and i believe if you try to buy it at retail value i think that's like 120 or 150 but say for example they're, they're letting it go for like I don't know it's like 70 80 dollars that makes more sense even as low as like 60 that makes more sense you know it's less than what you that um it, it costs retail wise but they're cleaning out their closet they want to make some money off of it they don't want it anymore so it kind of like correlates if you will versus someone who's listing it for like 15 dollars who would list a telfar bag for 15 dollars Unless that bag is like real janky, but even if it's not, e even if it is janky, you, st I mean, I don't know anyone that would do that. Telfar is a pretty popular in demand bag. Um, so I don't know anyone that would be letting that go for that low, like that low dollar amount. And a, a, another example I have, I'm going to give you this example. So I recently, let me see something, my sales. I recently sold a pair of Gucci slides, right? Now, I made sure I listed um, like the imperfections of the shoe. Um, you see that right there, which is an easy fix. Um, but you see, like uh, in, in my previous video, I mentioned to upload as much photos and a video if possible. You see the quality of the shoe. You see, you know it's real. Um, I'm including the dust bags. Like there's no, there's no fake in this. Um, 
So I, I listed that for 125. Now, normal, I believe these might, I don't remember what they, I don't even know what they retail for. They were given to me as a gift. Um, but I, I don't think they're more than like, I don't think they're more than $400. Um, but because of, you know, I've had it for a couple years, you see that it's a bit beat up because that little part is separating. So it requires a bit of fixing. It needs to be cleaned up a bit. So, you know, charging anything more than 200 is like robbery. Um, so I was very happy when, you know, someone offered 125 for this because also what also boosted the price was the fact that I was including the dust bags. The dust bags are also a commodity. Um... But you see what I'm talking about, like it, it's a name brand shoe, it's, it's a designer, um, it may be a bit um, not in the best shape, but it is a designer, it's still worth something, it can be fixed, the price correlation makes sense, you know that I'm not a scammer. That as well as I am a Posh Ambassador, but let's say for example I was not a Posh Ambassador because Everyone does not just become a posh ambassador. It takes, you know, a while for you to get the sales and all these things for you to then become one. I wasn't always one. I remember my first sale. Um, did I include the tag? My first sale was, was a pair of uh, designer glasses. Again, my price made sense. I believe it was like a pair of um, Dior, Dior shades. And I think I let them go for like $80. I believe I paid... 200 i wore them a few times i was really eager to let them go because i was a it was my first time selling something if i had those glasses now i would have never let them go for so low i would have let it go for nothing less than like 110 because it is dior like come on now but you you live and you learn right but that's just to show you again like as a new posher you know, you can still buy things from a new posher if their prices make sense. That person was just ridiculous. Um, also, um, well, you know what's funny? is at one particular point, I would see these scams. Let me see something. Um, let me click new. Because sometimes I see their stuff and it's like definite. Um, let me see. Is this person? Let me click on this person. No, this person is not scamming. But sometimes I remember one day I was looking around and like without with without fail, I kept coming across scamming pages. So you just have to do your like just be very thorough. Don't be so quick to say, oh, the price is great. Sale. Let me get this. No, <laughs> no, because then, then you will be scammed. But then also you have Poshmark's like satisfactory thing where um, if you feel like you were scammed or whatever the case may be, Poshmark will work with you to get your money back. So don't worry about that. But just, I mean, who wants to go through with buying something and then it's a scam and then you have to pretty much contact Poshmark after the fact that they don't ship the product or I don't even know how it would play out, but just prevent that by doing your research. Be thorough, look into the product, see, know what it retails for or have an idea as to what it retails for and just be realistic. Like no one's going to not, you know, like no one's going to list the product for a super low dollar amount just because if it's too low then it's not real like or the person's just scamming you one or the other just be aware of that also be aware as to people who list things that look like they're real but they're not because i've seen a few people i mean the next time i see it i'll like save it so that way i can show it to you guys but i've seen a few people who um like say for example say for example somebody has like this is actually real but Let's say for argument's sake, this isn't real. Let's say they put Louis Vuitton um, key and change holder, whatever, right? And you see the name, but like something just seems off. Like you, like you just, you just see the name, but you don't see like you know the symbols on the on the holder, something like that. And then there are people who tend to comment and be like, "Hey, is this authentic? Can you produce the?" Um, the serial number that most designer things have to show that it's real and they don't answer I don't know if it's because it's not real or they just are just ridiculous with their customer service and they don't answer I have no idea normally when I 
post designer things, I tend to include the code. And if I don't, then I will take a picture. Like I'll replace one of my pictures with a picture of the code. Now I've made it a habit, whether it's the perfume, whether it's a shoe, I include the product code um, in, in the pictures or in the video. So look out for those things too. Look out, look for things that will definitely verify that the product is actually legit. Um, I'm very big on buying new things. No shade to the people who buy, um, things that are like secondhand. Cause here's the thing. You can buy things that are new with tags. The tag will verify that it's real. You can buy things that are new, but there are no tags. So that's where the product code comes in. I have bought things that are new, but there's no tags on it. But again, I verify the authenticity based on the code or something like that. Or they provide me the authentication code with the dust bag, whatever. So that's what I do. Even if it's new, even if it's not new, um... And there's no tags. Like say, for example, you buy something that's used but in good condition. Again, the same thing applies. The authentic the authentication code, the um, the you know, the authentication card, um, the you know, these things will authenticate the product. So you just have to do your homework, do your pretty much your research on the pictures, but the pictures, which is again why I say it is very important when you are selling on Poshmark to include at minimum three pictures and if you can a video because now it's more trustworthy like okay this person is serious i feel like people who are scamming they tend to just post like one two photos and you know it's not really showing much or the photos is not it doesn't show um it doesn't seem real i am a paralegal and i work in like the trademark field like you know, intellectual property dealing with trademarks and it's funny because now that i'm doing poshmark i understand why uspto are so very specific about what they will or will not accept as a um <coughs> specimen which means like a product that they will accept like picture wise now i understand why they are specific because pretty much if i upload a jpeg um of a regular picture right they'll deny it they'll say no but if i take a picture of the product they'll honor it because now it seems like it's more it's in real time it's real it's it's authentic things like that you have to apply that same knowledge behind what you're doing what we're doing is like it's kind of like intellectual property it's our it's our um our, our rights and our goods right and we're selling so you have to like authenticate it make it seem like it's real but you know do all these not make it seem you, you are making you are um pro proving that it is real so you have to take good credible photos to prove that by doing so upload a you know at least three photos good lighting um Make sure you get the product in all in 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 different angles to show like how it looks. For example, when I take pictures of shoes, I take a picture of the front of the shoe, the back of the shoe. I flip the shoe um to the to the point where you can see like like the bottom, like the the is that, that's not the sole. The sole is on the, whatever the bottom of the shoe, so you can see if it's like I walk in them too much and like you know whatever. Like I want you to get the full you know the full um picture for the quality of the product uh, that's what you should be looking for from other people when they're listing their things for sale that you are looking to buy doing all these things will allow you to then prevent yourself from being um from becoming a victim of somebody who is just doing fraud stuff on poshmark so don't be naive like i was when i first you know was you know um starting poshmark and i was you know really um desperate to find a white telfar bag funny enough i really wanted that white telfar bag i never bought a white bag no i did buy a white bag i did buy a white bag i can't pronounce the name it's that it was a j a c whatever i can't pronounce it but I did buy a white bag, beautiful, very happy with it. So, but yeah, I was desperate for a white bag and look what desperation caused. I almost got scammed. Thank God that, you know, nothing became of it. And, you know, my money was refunded, although it was just $9, but it's not even about the dollar amount. It's once they have like access to your information, you know what I'm saying? If, if they are scammers, I don't know how intricate it is with regards to that, but I'm just so thankful that um that was resolved in a way that 
I was not harmed in any financial way. So yeah, these are some things that I'm just thinking of, of regarding how to avoid being um, scammed on Poshmark. Um, I will definitely be more, um, I guess I'll look, I'll try to be more aware of other people, like other posts as they come up that seem like fraud. Um, once I see them, I'll save them and show you guys to show like, yeah, this person definitely, you know, beware. This person is showing me that they're not, um, acting in good faith, that their products, their price really low. So now I know they're a red flag. The next time I see that, I'll definitely save them to show you guys as a part two. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching this video. I hope this was very helpful. Poshmark is a great place to buy and to sell. So yeah, that's all for this video. I will definitely post a part two um, regarding avoiding scams on Poshmark. Thank you so much. Please like this video if you like if you felt that it was really um, useful for you. Share it, subscribe, um, drop any comments if you you know you want to know more about Poshmark. I'll be happy to respond and make more videos about this. Thanks, guys. Bye.